the unforgivable crime of John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller was visiting family relative William Humiston at his farm outside of Cleveland when the news of the government's $29 million fine against him was announced on that balmy summer day in August of 1907. When told of the news, JDR looked up, gave a simple nod, then continued chatting with his cousin on the detriments of overeating and on the finer points of farming. He didn't mention the fine again. John D. and his cousin carried on with their lunch of sandwiches and lemonade under that shady grove of trees. $29 million in 1907 equates to just shy of a billion dollars today. The judge who determined the amount Kennesaw Landis, of course, utilized the landmark case as a springboard to his own fame and fortune. But then, not everyone joined the gloating Landis in celebration of this persecuting prosecution. In fact, our own New York Times commented that no theory of law or justice sustains such a thumping penalty. Many claimed that with this draconian initiative, President Trustbuster himself, Teddy Roosevelt, someone who admittedly remained blissfully ignorant of all facets of business and finance, was driving the state of business in America to a state of ruin. Others claimed that this action effectively tripped off the catastrophic financial panic of 1907. Oh, which reminds us that even after John D. was told of the $29 million fine in August, he then voluntarily donated $10 million of his own money, no strings attached, to J.P. Morgan's rescue plan when the market crash did eventually come in October of that same year. <laughs> yes, two months after being told that his government would be hitting him with the largest fine in American history, John D. wrote out a check separate and apart from any of this mess in order to bail out that very same government that was trying to bankrupt him. Now, for the record, John D. Rockefeller came from nothing. Unlike the great trust buster, Teddy Roosevelt, who sustained his lavish lifestyle on his family's trust fund his entire life, Rockefeller's father was a philandering bigamist con man who traveled from town to town under various aliases, peddling snake oils and elixirs of questionable efficacy. John D. Rockefeller was completely self-made, starting out on his own at 16 years old as a bookkeeper. He learned early on that the numbers never lie. To him, numbers represented nearly the purest form of integrity, because the numbers cannot and never will con anyone. By 21, he had entered into a dry goods partnership and 25 years later was the richest man on earth. And those health tips he shared with his cousin back in the day, well, they seem to have worked because John D. enjoyed his wealth and his grandchildren for many, many years, bicycling, playing hours of golf, taking long hikes through his sprawling Pocantico Hills estate until he was 97 years old. The unforgivable crime of John D. Rockefeller? Becoming the richest man on earth, all on his own. But then as he used to say, only fools get all puffed up over money. He was remarkably humble and philosophical about his success entirely. After all, the way he'd explain it was, God gave me the money. And so this devout Baptist and fiercely patriotic man who never drank, smoked, or used foul language felt compelled to give a lot of that money away. And so he did. Before he passed on in 1937, John D. Rockefeller gave away over $500 million of his own money. His son John Jr. carried on thereafter, giving away about the same amount father and son over the first half of the 20th century would together give away over a billion dollars. And that is not adjusted for inflation. There are a lot of opinions about the Rockefellers. 
and here is mine. John D. Rockefeller is simply one of the most fascinating characters in the history of this great nation, not to mention in the history of this incredible place that we now call New York. Please be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts. Climb aboard. History's cool.